Computers and Windows in Texas and Media for Kids. And I have to say, to start off, that my authority on this subject is pretty questionable. I am exactly what you expect to find in education, which is a white woman, single, middle class, cisgendered, straight, I'm about as normal as you come. Oh, there's no sound. This is Dr. Radine Sims Bishop. She's talking about an article she wrote in 1990 introducing the idea of mirrors, windows, and sliding glass doors in literature. And I thought it was important for her to be here to explain this idea. This is our oldest daughter. These pictures are a few years ago. She is a lot like me in that she kind of fits what you expect to see in media and literature everywhere as a white, middle class, straight. And yet, in spite of the fact that I would expect she would see mirrors a ton, when this magazine showed up at home, at about the time those pictures were taken, she nearly flipped out of her skin with the excitement because she said, there's a girl like me on the cover. And she meant there's a girl in glasses and braces. And it hadn't occurred to me that that mirror was missing for her in her life and it expanded my idea and my understanding about this. It got me thinking, how many girls get to have that opportunity she's having? And not just girls. But how many kids get to see themselves, get to have mirrors in the media, in the literature that they have around them? Um, would your students, would my students? My kid was also lucky. She's a, that, a voracious reader. And one of the reasons, I think, is the windows in her life. This was her brownie troop. Her friends had many different lived experiences from her. Most of them spoke multiple languages. Their lives were completely different. They were windows into so much more for her. Dr. Bishop again, at the moment she's talking about the importance of getting these books into classrooms and an organization that's working to do that. The organization that she's referencing is We Need Diverse Books. If you're not familiar with it, I highly recommend you look it up. It was started just under five years ago by Ellen O, a children's book author, um, when they started off with a hashtag and she ran with it. And it's to address these stats. You see, there are a lot of kids who get to have mirrors in literature and a lot of kids who don't so much have those mirrors. There's a comparison to the US population. The kids I teach are overwhelmingly Latinx. They don't have a lot of mirrors. The other kids don't have a lot of windows into that world when it comes to children's literature. Animals and trucks, on the other hand, we got those. <laughs> this list gave me a lot of hope when I first looked at it. There's two books by Jacqueline Woodson, there's a Christopher Paul Curtis, there's a Kekla Magoon, some phenomenal authors. When I stopped and did the numbers though, more than half those authors are white. It's true for the older kids too, even though there's Tommy Adeyemi's Children of the Blood and Bone, a phenomenal book. Elizabeth Acevedo's The Poet, Poet X that won the National Book Award for Young People's Literature last year. Again, it's still good in literature and publishing to be white. It's also good to be male for the record when you look at the stats on these. Now some of those people are still doing really good work. Rick Riordan works really hard to get diverse characters in his books, diversity and gender, identity, religion, ethnicity, all of that. Dear Evan Hansen is about a main character who has Severe Anxiety, a mirror that spoke greatly to our oldest daughter. Hey Kiddo is Jared Coruscoza's new memoir about growing up with a mom addicted to drugs and alcohol. Um, Prince and the Dressmaker has a main character who is gender non-conforming. Those are other kinds of mirrors and windows that kids need to have in their lives. But kids also just need to get to see themselves being kids in books. Black children should not only get to see mirrors through books about the civil rights movement. LGBTQ kids should not only get to see mirrors through books about struggling with acceptance from themselves or others. They need to just see themselves being kids in books. Kate Messner's The Seventh Wish has a main character whose sibling is struggling with opioid addiction. This book has been pulled from a lot of elementary school libraries because the librarians are saying it's too much, it's too heavy for our kids. Messner argues, what you're saying to kids by doing that is, for those kids in your school who are living that, who have family members struggling with opioid addiction, and you have those kids, you're saying your lived experience is too much, it's too hard, we can't have it in our library. You've removed that mirror from them and window for their peers. The Other Boy is a, a new book about a transgender child. It's one of the 10 middle school titles this year for the Virginia Reader's Choice. It means it was chosen by educators and librarians in Virginia as a book middle schoolers should read. Our younger daughter's school substituted another book in place of this one on that list. They pulled it. What is the message they're sending to those kids about this book as a mirror or a window for themselves or for their peers? That's the dedication um, MJ Hennessy put in that book. And to me, it's such a powerful statement about that book as a mirror and as a window for kids. Regardless of who the kids are, and this next picture is actually the first group of kids that I taught 21 years ago. Regardless of who they are, they need mirrors and windows. They need them in books, they need them in media, they need the chance to see themselves and others 
And in order to do that, we've got to be publishing it, we've got to be producing it, and then we've got to get it into the hands and eyeballs of children because it makes a difference.